going viral. Oh, you know, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Losing a bet yesterday. Quote, made good on the bet. Not sure why I let Dave and Rick talk me into it, but it's done. So, Chris, what bet did you lose, and where's the blue hair? Wow. No, so I had to get rid of it because I knew I was coming on this show. Okay. No way I was getting on national TV <laughs> with the oh, electric blue oh, hair. Oh, he doesn't want it on national TV? Hey, can we zoom in, please? Thank oh, you. Appreciate that. Y'all well, need to stay off of social media. But anyway, the bet was... That looks pretty good. During the regular season, we do picks against the spread. Regular season and postseason for football season. And in the regular season, I was pretty good. I was in second place going into the playoffs and I ended up going one nine and one in the post oh, and, I no. and as a result they got to dye my hair a color of their choosing the hair and the beard so they, they bleached it first right to get you that blue no no that's the spraying kind we, get, oh, we need to get that in and out so we need to get that in and out okay. yeah. I'm honest to god so I, I follow you on twitter obviously I saw this I thought it was a photoshop I didn't think you <laughs> no I did I thought you like photoshopped the blue in I didn't think you actually dyed it good I'm, for you I'm mad because I should have made Nick do that because he picked the Giants, I should have made this uh, clown uh, have oh, his yeah, hair and beer you, blue. You should have absolutely I made him do something. Out. Ever since the first time I introduced him to Odell Beckham, his whole head and face is blue. All right. That's, first, <laughs> none of that's accurate, first of all. Second of all, I the, the, the bets you lose in radio gags, I've been down this road. What's the I've, worst you've done? I can't. It involves hot coffee, is all I'm going to say. Wow. I'm not going to go into the rest of it. I'll tell you, as we would say, offline. Or you could Google it, America. But I am not talking about it on this television show. <laughs> That's right. my previous I, life. I, I, I stare to you, Nick Wright. We will we'll definitely go. move on. Now, to Patriots. Still hurts. Yesterday, we discussed Lane Johnson's comment that he, quote, would rather win one Super Bowl and have fun than five and be miserable. He also called New England a, quote, fear-based organization. Well, several of his prominent excuse me, prominent Patriots took offense to the claim, including three-time Super Bowl champion, Teddy Brewski. Uh, Lane Johnson, I don't know what he's talking about. I had a lot of fun. There were so many times that we would speak out in meetings. The entire team meeting would erupt in laughter. We're playing music on the team plane. We're sell we, we, do so we had so much fun. In the ones that I was there, I cannot understand what he's saying there. If you want a relationship and you want to double date with your coach, I mean, go play, go play with those guys. Go ahead. That's but a good line. Unless, unless you want, if you want to learn how to win games right. and consistently win I games throughout, throughout your career, you play for Bill Belichick. Me, me. All right, some, some shade there. A little patriot <laughs> exceptionalism at the end yeah. there. We'll let it go. But. A little bit. Hey, man, that, that's not right, though. He's talking about double dating Bill Belichick. Uh, hey, now. <laughs> come on, hey. hey, CC, now. Hey. Come on, now. Let's keep that, let's keep that out of there. Come <laughs> on, now. It's a family oh, program. Don't take, don't take it there, CC. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Belichick, didn't, there, he now. didn't came up now. Don't add a dirty line to this morning. Come on, now. Come please ask me. Family program here. Chris Casey, let me ask you this. Your choice, would you rather play for the New England Patriots or the Philly Eagles. Well, I want to win championships. I mean, if anybody has, that has ever played the game yeah. understands, if you have success at that level, that is the ultimate. So everybody wants to win a championship. I remember in 2011 when we won with the Giants in Super Bowl 46, yeah. coming off of that field, all I can remember thinking was, this is the best feeling in the world and this is all I want to do. Now the process of going about competing for a championship is hard and I think that's probably what Lane Johnson is referring to because it's hard to get yourself motivated year in year out to go through that process. The grind of an NFL regular season to be able to give yourself a chance to get into the tournament and compete now, for Chris, a championship. Now Chris, how was it for you? I'm going to say Tom Coughlin second time around because Tom was different then when he first was coaching in the pros in Jacksonville, we had all the meeting rules and all the rules of stuff that you couldn't do. Tom changed because he said that the players weren't responding the way that he was coaching before. Well, he changed in his approach to practice, and he recognized with the Giants that he had a more veteran team and that he can trust those guys. He established the leadership council, and so the respected guys from each position group and the team captains would always get together and meet with Coach Coughlin a couple of times a week, and he had a good pulse of where the team was. So I think that's important when you start talking about the relationship between the head coach and how your guys enjoy going about their business. But that being said, it's a grind, and there's no way to be able to avoid it. And so I hear what Lane Johnson is saying and how they enjoyed the ride with Doug Peterson. But one of the things that you have to guard against in this league is complacency. And so I understand that you want to have fun, but you also got to understand when it's time to work. And that's what Bill Belichick doesn't let his guys get away with, is being complacent and not appreciating the opportunities that you have because they're few and far in between. But one thing you do know, if you sign up to be a New England Patriot, you're going to have a chance to be in the Super Bowl.
I yeah. mean, you look at what Tom Brady has done over his 17-year season span of being the starting quarterback up there. They've been in the Super Bowl eight years. Since he's gotten there, if you play there, play for them, play with them for at least four seasons, you automate you every single guy that's done that has played in at least one Super Bowl. If you play with them for at least yes. four years since Brady's been there, you've played in at least one Super Bowl. And I have a lot of respect for that. We we had a little treat um, earlier in the show. He happened to be in the building, Benjamin Watson. Mm -hmm. He played in New England. He came into the studio to say hello, says he watches the show, is a fan of the show. We asked him this question, and he was like, there's a difference when you're a younger player and you don't have the confidence and you haven't learned a lot of football. It's hard to play in New England because what they demand from you. But as a veteran player, he said it was very inviting, the amount of football that you learned, and he had enough confidence in himself. But he said when you come to New England, every day you better be ready to get cussed out. So Teddy Bruschi, I got a lot of respect for Teddy. Teddy is one of the spokespeople for New England. So you telling me <laughs> that we get to listen to music on the plane, like that's like a treat? That's like a Scooby snack? That's like the least of all professional sports. Like, what about practice, Teddy? Y'all ever have music at practice? Uh, no. <laughs> what about the locker room, Teddy? Y'all run the locker room? Uh, no. So there is a lot of things, there's a lot of things you have to give up in New England for a chance to win those championships. And to me, I want to win. I've never played in the Super Bowl, and I would do whatever I took. Now, I wouldn't cha change my career, mm, sure. but to get to one of those games and get myself the opportunity, I got respect for the whole process. But we do this weird thing with the Patriots that we don't do with other similar dynastic runs, which is we assign greatness to all of their decisions. So let me give an example from the NBA with Phil Jackson, right? Mm. Phil Jackson in the run with the Bulls. If we say, why were the Bulls so successful? And why was Phil successful post-Bulls? First thing you would say is the players, right? Jordan mm -hmm. and Pippen and then Kobe and Shaq, Kobe and Powell. So that's the Tom Brady version of it. Second thing we would say is the triangle, when it used to work. It was certainly in the 90s. Right. And then with Shaq and then that's Belichick's attention to detail. You know what we don't do? You know what I think it was? I think it was the Zen Master books. I think it was the books that he gave that. to all the players. It, what we don't have is every I know it NBA. wasn't the books because Ron Harper, that's my homeboy. <laughs> He wasn't reading them. <laughs> I'm just I don't think Ron Artest was reading them either. Hart, that's my boy, Hart. You know. You know, the book thing? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, but we, in the NBA, what we didn't have was a bunch of teams being like, you know what? We're going to have our players meditate, and we're going to give our players books. Because they understood, you know why the, the, those teams were great under Phil? His, his strategy, the talent. Mm. With the Patriots, we give, we give greatness to all of it. Oh, it's the way they do interviews. Oh, it's the way they're prepped about not saying. No, anything. some of it stinks. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and some of it is just is just luck. Or some of it it just goes along. Some for the of ride. it is just pure control. Yeah, and it's also baked into the cake. I hear what you're saying, Nick. I do think it's hard to extract one component and then think that the calculus still adds up in the end. And I think the reason why we don't see that desperation in the NBA, and I'm using that word intentionally, people are desperate in the NFL to emulate the legacy of success Belichick has been able to cultivate. That is the reason why they will do yes. any. If they saw Bill Belichick wearing blue beards and blue hair, it's you would start hoodie. seeing that too. You right. would. Well, culture is so much more important in the yeah. NFL because you have more moving pieces. You mm -hmm. have a lot of players, whereas in the NBA, one or two guys can make the difference in sure. your team mm -hmm. competing for a championship. Yes. So I think that's why everybody looks at the Patriots as the standard. But in terms of being able to have fun at your profession, the one thing that I would say being on this side of it now is I would never want to look back in my career and have any regrets in terms of not taking advantage of opportunities to win championships. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's one thing where I think some veteran players, some guys that have transitioned away from the game, they look at Lane Johnson's comments and they say, dude, you need to chill out for but a second because you don't recognize the opportunity that you have with this Eagles team and with Carson Wentz and this ascending group of and players. it's easy for Lane to say when they just won. You yeah. know what I mean? He's saying yeah, it with absolutely. the championship. Yeah. Correct, correct. And, and yeah. I don't know, it's just me. The Super Bowl looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris Canty, thanks for joining us. You can't do the Warriors. Are they shooing for the NBA title? A lot of people think so. That's yeah, next on First Things First. You can't have no fun. No. Winning looks like fun, though. I'm just saying. Winning is fun.